They, this mother had a two-year-old and a four-year-old and she was putting the bed and she decided to apply this and she, she said, Brendan, I really respect you. And she thought that he would say, what do you mean? She said he sat up and he said, thank you, mommy. And he would always echo. She said, I love you. And he would say, I love you. She said, I respect you. He sat up and said, thank you. And she said, he understood what I was saying. Welcome to the Focus on the Family broadcast, helping families thrive. Today, we're going to continue the discussion of Emerson's book, Mother and Son, The Respect Effect. It's good for every mom to hear what Emerson is saying, and we're going to get back to it today. And Dr. Egerich has helped transform countless marriages through his Love and Respect conferences. He's written a number of books, including the subject of today's, as you said, Jim, it's called Mother and Son, The Respect Effect. Emerson, welcome back. Oh, thank you. Okay, I am like, you know, a kid at a smorgasbord now. I mean, this is such good material. I was uh, thinking about it all night, uh, about applying these things in different ways, and I'm sure many of our listeners who were able to listen last time have done the same thing. Um, that innate ability of a woman to look at herself first. I mean, it is something I see in Jean all the time where she's loading up guilt because something didn't go right. You were very strong yesterday saying, moms, don't do that. Mm -hmm. um, we know you're going to look to your own heart first to say, look how I've blown it. Look how I've shamed. Uh, reiterate that important point for moms not to go down that alley, which could be really destructive. Right. Well, and the point applies because we're saying that boys need a mother's respect. And at first, that seems counterintuitive. It's countercultural. Wait a minute. I need my son's respect. I can't believe you're saying I got to respect my boy because he's not doing things that are not respectable. He's not being obedient to me. And so it was Sarah, my wife, as well as hundreds of mothers that began to put me onto this when they began to apply this teaching that we've had in marriage that when a wife puts on a respectful demeanor toward her husband, that man softens, moves toward her, and connects, which is the longing of every woman's heart. And she began to apply it to her boy, and they began to write me. And so when I wrote this book, though, I realized I know that many mothers, oh, I have been so disrespectful. Oh, and then she starts replaying in her mind all these scenes where she's blown it. And now she's thinking, I've ruined him. I've ruined the family. I've ruined everything. I've ruined the cosmos. And she moves into the self-deprecation. So one of the things I want to encourage her to do is we need to work together here. This is not for the purpose of you going into that. We're just talking about adding a few vocabulary words to your love and to keep doing what you're doing, but make some adjustments and meet a need here that we think has been removed from the parenting radar screen with regard to a boy's need to feel respected for who he is apart from his performance. And that doesn't seem... Hmm logical or right. And so this is a niche that we're bringing into this, but mothers can move into this, oh, I've blown it. And I'm saying, let's let's backtrack on that. Let's just see it as a slight little adjustment and watch the big results. Uh, Emerson, in fact, you help us by understanding this in a, a couple of concepts in your book. One is the guides, principle, and chair. We don't want to get locked into all of the description because it is meaty. You know, Paul talks about not being on the milk of the word, but the meat of the word. I think for parenting, you're into the meat of what it means to be a mom. And uh, I would want to point people, if you want to get more of that description, go to the website and we'll post that there. But briefly talk about um, what uh, the guide principle is and what chairs right. is. Guides and chairs are two acronyms. And uh, I had the privilege, as I mentioned before, to study the Bible 30 hours a week for nearly 20 years. And I looked at everything in the Bible on parenting, not just principles that would apply to parenting, but what has God said to a father, to a mother? And I worked really hard in putting it together in an acronym, GUIDES, G-U-I-D-E-S, that parents are to be giving, understanding, instructing, disciplining, encouraging, and supplicating. We won't go into that, but that's God's call on a mom. That's God's call on a dad. And he wants us to do that. And we do that unto him. But then I looked at another acronym, CHAIRS, C-H-A-I-R-S, which I looked in Scripture. What does God say to us about male and female? For instance, act strong, be like men. Well, what, is it, what does it mean to be strong like man? There's no statement, be strong and act like a woman. What, what is God saying to us? And I worked very hard then taking those salient scriptures that deal with masculinity as well as femininity, but in this one, masculinity, and came up with chairs, C-H-A-I-R-S. And there are things about a boy 
that are very masculine. And when you understand what God is saying, you can then speak into that with what I call respect talk, and that boy's spirit will soften, he will look at mom and move toward you to connect, which is the longing of your heart as a mother. Cover the chairs, though. It's conquest. Um, hierarchy, hierarchy, authority, insight, a relationship, and sexuality. And these are the things that you know a boy is thinking about, behaving like or toward. And Correct. It's important for a mom particularly to understand how their boy is thinking. Yeah, right? for instance, conquest, that doesn't sound you know, like that's very inviting, but Adam was created... Uh, in Garden of Eden, and before Eve was designed, before the fall, and he was to cultivate and maintain the garden. And uh, he was designed by God to work in the field, and he's cursed in the field. She's cursed in the family. But I always say, what's the first question every man asks another man when they meet for the first time? What do you do? 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 This is inherent within us. And it doesn't mean that women aren't going to ask that question, but they'll tend to look at the ring, they'll go relationally, are you married, do you have children? Even a CEO of a corporation will still look around and she will talk relationally. It's the way she wants to do it. It's not a matter that she can't do the other. And we are more focused here. Well, what does it mean for your boy then to grow up to work in a field? Well, how is he processing conquest? When he's making a Legos set, what, what's he trying to achieve? What, what's he doing? And the book unpacks each of those concepts and coaches a mother what she can say when she notices something and use a word like, I really am proud of you here, or I appreciate that, or I value you, or I respect you, or let's just take on insight, which is the eye of chairs. Here's a mother who applied this, and she wrote me, and she said this, and it's very, very powerful. When my son gives me his insight, I say, I really respect what you have to say. Or I say, I respect the way you handle that situation. Or I really respect how you're taking initiative to get things done and follow through with. She said, these things have made my son smile like I have never seen. I talk more about respect with regard to sporting events and showing respect for other opponents. My son knows without a doubt that I love him. Now I feel he knows that I value him and his ideas, which I may not have done so well in the past. Thank you for sharing God's message. What are some of those desires that boys have in that relationship with their mom? Well, they have several. They have, as we talked about in terms of that chairs, and I've written this several times in the book, but she needs to know that he needs to know that she respects his desire to work and achieve, that's the C, respect his desire to provide, protect, and even die. I mean, a five-year-old little boy said to his mommy, I'll protect you, mommy. And some others laugh at that, but no, there's something going on there huh. and need to honor that. Why does he put on the Superman outfit? What's going on? You can speak to that. You're a strong man. Feel his muscles. Let him flex. You're a strong man. You're, you protect women and the innocent. Why do boys build the forts? Why do they pick up sticks to fight? We think, oh, they're going to become violent. You ask every little boy who's building a fort and he's got these swords out there, he's protecting the innocent from the evil invaders. He is doing a righteous deed. But we're labeling that in a way that is though somehow we need to indict him, you know? That's that effeminate culture aspect yeah. that the I was talking The effeminization of, of the male, making him soft. Uh, respecting his desire to be strong and to lead and to make decisions. That's that authority. Respecting his desire to analyze, solve, and counsel. Respect his desire for a shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder friendship. And I've coached mothers on this. Mom, want to talk. It's Sarah, my wife, talks about the 100 questions. She would ask her at least 20 questions every day when the boys would come home. And finally, David, after several days, Mom, it's the same at school every day. If anything changes, I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah, right. And so they're asking questions, asking questions. And I say to Mom, when the two boys are out playing catch, just go out there, take a chair out, not iPhone, have nothing going on, no recipe book, no nothing. Just sit there and just watch them play catch for 15 minutes. Don't say a word. Just watch them. And then I want you to just watch them. They'll be making eye contact at you, throwing and, you know, running, get the, they'll, whatever they're going to do. Now you get up, go into the house, evening meal, whatever. Now call them in, tell them to go upstairs, make their bed that they didn't make, wash their hands and face, and clean up their room and come down to dinner. It'll all be done. See, what you've done is you've energized them. You've, you've made a deposit in their spirits just by what we call the shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder activity. See, mothers feel that we're only connected if we're talking face-to-face -face and he's sharing with me what his day was all about. Well, daughters will do that, but boys are a little bit different. So what you want to do is meet his need, not just be reassured that everything's okay between you. Do it this shoulder-to-shoulder. -shoulder. And I coach mothers on this, and women are writing me, this is unbelievable. Why hasn't anybody told us this? Well, or they're thinking, that's really hard to do. 
Well, it's I've not got, hard to my, do. I've got my task well, list. Well, that's exactly right. It's not hard to <laughs> I do. I can it hear just Jean. Seems, Yeah, it just <laughs> it seems like this is not producing any quality in our relationship. This is not quality time. Right. It's a waste of time. Exactly. But that's if we filter it through the feminine grid again. If we, and that's what you're pointing out. And it's not to indict the feminine. We need to honor that, exalt all of that. But what we're reminding us, Jesus said, Have you not read, he who made them from the beginning made them male and female. And though we're equal, we're not the same. Mm. And we need to understand then what is different about our boy? And does he have a need that we're maybe not paying attention to? And I've written this book to say it's a huge need. And when you meet it, he softens and connects with you. And he gets affectionate with you. And generally the, speaking. And the book from Dr. Emerson Egrich is Mother and Son, The Respect Effect. It's available at focusonthefamily.com slash radio, along with the CD of our two-part conversation. And you can call if you'd prefer 1-800-THE-LETTER-A-AND-THE-WORD-FAMILY. Uh, Emerson, in the last portion of the program, I want to get to some real practical respect talk at every level of development, toddler, teen, and everything in between. Before I do, though, you mentioned the right outcome. And for that mom who has tried different things, maybe she's even innately tried some of the things that you're talking about, but it hasn't worked. Mm -hmm. Uh, She hasn't received the response from her son. Maybe it's just years of antagonism between them. Um, Do you have examples where it's taken much more than what you're describing to heal that relationship because of the wounds Mm -hmm. between them both? Mm -hmm. Describe that environment where it's harder work. The the challenge for all of us is to step back for a moment and say, look, whether or not my son responds to this, or let's put it by way of analogy, a father is to be loving toward his daughter, whether or not she rebels and gets into drugs or whatever, that he can be a very loving father apart from the outcome in her, that if he measures his parenting based on her negative response to him right now, he may be misreading that. So to moms, Your son may not respond immediately. There could be any number of things that are going on. He could be addicted. He could be lying. I mean, we all know I went to a military school for five years, from eighth grade to twelfth grade, five years of my life, and it had nothing to do with my mom. (laughs) It had everything to do with me. And so one of the things that I want to say, you stay the course on this. This is about meeting your son's need, whether he appreciates it or not. This is about you being a respectful woman of God, whether your son is responsive or not. Don't give in to contempt and disrespect and communicating that way with the hope that somehow he's going to repent. That would be using unholy means to achieve a very worthy end. So my challenge, stay the course, do this unto Christ, and just trust that what we're saying here is correct. Because mothers love to meet a need, and you're meeting your son's need to be believed in, that you honor his heart, and you believe in him more than he probably believes in himself right now. And I believe if anything's going to cause him to turn the corner, it's that. I do not believe boys will return home to a mother who has nothing but contempt and the feeling that she despises him because he's humiliated her and shamed her and made her feel that she's a failure as a mother and as a woman. Emerson, that is so powerful. You're right on the money again because I think of the many stories I've heard where you've had a prodigal child and what brings that child back over the long term, usually when they're an adult, will be that consistency of love that they felt from mom and dad. And if it's not there, the chances are it may not happen. And so I love that, keeping that tether of love tight, because that's the testimony that we receive in the end, Mm -hmm. that I came back to my mom because it just was so obvious how much she cared about me. Yes, And And it took me time to figure that out. And I would add a tether of respect and honor, because we again, we default to the love component. Mothers are loving. We've got a good friend right now. Her son uh, is in prison, and she's continued to apply this. And this is a man in prison, will be there for many years, but his attitude toward his mother, he got addicted. And it wasn't anything to do with her. He got himself in a mess, and he's an, he's an addict. But because she's honored his spirit, mm-hmm. even though she's been humiliated by what has happened, the family has, the sorrow that they're experiencing, his own regret, his own guilt, she has given voice to these principles, and this son is connected from behind the walls, the prison bars, but she has a relationship with her son yeah. because of this. That's powerful. That's so good. Hey, we do want to get practical, so let's let's talk for the remaining minutes about how to deal with, um, I guess you'd say, the phases of childhood. So that toddler 
uh, to try to get these points across. Maybe that toddler just hit his little sister or something. <laughs> How does mom engage that little boy to say, Johnny, that's not what we're going to do? Yes. You're an honorable young man, and honorable men do not do this. Your daddy doesn't do this. You're honorable. Now, let me insert, mothers think, well, a three-year-old, four-year-old isn't uh, going to understand that concept. This is what's blown away. Does a little girl understand when daddy says, I love you? Absolutely. She surely does. And mothers were testing this out. I don't think that my boy would respect me. And they, this mother had a two-year-old and a four-year-old, and she was putting the bed, and she decided to apply this, and she has a psychological background. She's a psychologist of sorts. She said, um, she said, Brendan, I really respect you. And she thought that he would say, what do you mean? She said he sat up. And he said, thank you, Mommy. And he would always echo. She said, I love you. And he would say, I love you. She said, I respect you. He sat up and said, thank you. And she said, he understood what I was saying. Mm. Now, it's still an abstract concept, so I'm not going to debate that always. But if she uses the language with that toddler, it's not honorable. It's not honorable to hit your sister. Just keep on that message. Mm. That is good. Let's move it to grade school. Maybe it's getting a little more serious now and the chores aren't being done. You haven't experienced this, have Never you, in my We've life. We've never experienced this. <laughs> For the 1,000th time, can you take that trash out and put it in the garage, big can? Right. I mean, that's my mantra. Right. Oh, yeah, Dad will do it. And then an hour later, still why waiting. is the trash still yes. here? Yes. <laughs> Talk to that mom yes. who's struggling with chores. Yes. Well, first of all, there will be no perfect children. There was only one perfect child. <laughs> and so, you know, you and you didn't uh, have that perfect child. So there, we've got to allow for uh, some degree of independence. Jesus said a boy is going to leave father and mother. And so, as I say, you, you control during the toddler years, but then you have to move into counsel from, you know, those teen years because you can't control them 24-7, and then there's the casting off. And you want to develop this boy to finally leave home. Okay, and so there's got to be some allowance for him to, you know, wiggle a little bit. But on that point, you ask the question. You know, I've asked you multiple times to take the garbage out. You know, it's it's. I understand it's a hassle, and I know there are more exciting things to do. But you said you would do it, and I see you as an honorable man of integrity. And help me understand this, because I believe in you, and I believe you're becoming this man of honor. I, I need you to be honorable and follow through on your word here, even though it's a hassle. But you tell me, how can we solve this problem? So you're I, putting it on their honor to do it. I like back, that. It, yeah. As long as we don't use this as a club, right? we have to figure out, that's why I'm saying, what battle do you want to fight here? Is it the garbage battle, or is it another one? You know, but... There, come that, there has to come that moment when we ask that question, we put the, the, the problem back on his shoulder. You coach me here. If you were dad, what would you say to you? Because I see you as an honorable man, and yet it's almost like you're not honoring me. You're not respecting me. Have I done something that has caused you not to want to respond to me? Help me understand, where am I failing as a parent? So you've kind of covered that tween message as well um, in terms of respecting each other, and then that teen message when maybe they're coming home late blowing curfew more often than they should. Uh, dig into that a little bit, a little more intellectual discussion. Uh, what I'm finding as the teens get older is their rationales become a little more difficult to debate. You know, there's uh, reasons why these things aren't happening. And you begin to get into these lengthy debates rather than your instructions being followed. Uh, speak to that issue of the, of the debate season of teenhood. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, and that's where the debate cannot get down into the gutter where you are showing disrespect toward the spirit of the individual. There has to be an appeal. Jonathan and David, you know, as they went through those teen years, that I tried to remind myself, okay, this is going to be a discussion here of man to man. We're going to talk honorably with each other, respectfully with each other. I said to David, there were times he was pushing the limits, and I, I have a, a circle that I drew. You have authority of father, you have the freedom of the son, and you have the responsibility. So I had authority, freedom, and responsibility. And I said, son, I know you want more freedom, and you really don't want my authority, and yet you want me to be responsible for you. I will tell you, you can have total freedom and come out totally from underneath my authority, but you have to be 100% responsible for yourself. Hmm. And you don't want that because you want things that I'm responsible for you. I get that, but you want more freedom. All I can say is we're going to have some tension here. And this tension is healthy, but in a few years, you're going to be outside the home. So now let's talk, how can we honor each other? Yeah. You know, we have a curfew. I know that feels limiting to you, but we live in fear when you're not here. 
So how can you serve us? How can you honor us even though you feel this is unfair? Talk to me. I know you feel this is unjust. I know you feel this is unfair. I know you feel I'm dishonoring you. But I feel it is fair. It is reasonable. It guards your mom and my heart from feeling fear. And I feel you're honoring us. So now how can we create win-win? Help me. I like that. It's rational and it's calm. Emerson, before we go, I mean, one of the culture's greatest questions right now are the kind of the late blooming of, of boys to men. I mean, the 20-something that is living in his mom and dad's basement, perhaps, uh, doesn't seem motivated, playing video games way too much, uh, is arriving at adulthood maybe five to ten years later than men used to. Speak to that mom who's got that son in that phase of life where they're just not sure what to do. Um, what would you say to her? Well, I think, again, this is one of my concerns, that I think this, we talk about the soft male, or we talk about this boy, and is he lazy, is he slothful, is this something that's evidence of a poor character quality, or does this reinforce my message? He's afraid because all the messages out there are opposite of chairs, that he, he doesn't have it in him to right. conquer. He, he really doesn't have that strength to provide and protect. He doesn't have strength of leadership. He really doesn't have a lot of insight. Uh, he's really not a person you want to have a good friendship and relationship with. And he may not, you know, have a, a right perspective on human sexuality. And he's beginning, to, particularly if he's a Christ follower, beginning to feel like, is he really a man? Does he really have what it takes? Can I really enter that adventure and make a difference in the field that perhaps God wants me in? And men will pull back out of fear. And so the real question is, can a mom begin to speak into that and say, honey, I do believe in you. I believe that God has a call on you. I believe there's something that he has for you. I've been praying for you for 20 years on that. And I'm fully confident that he's going to reveal that. And here's, the, here's what I see in you. Here are the desires I see in you. Yeah, the, the, the opportunities aren't there, but I just need to go on record to say, here's what I believe about you. And if I've been remiss in saying that, or if I've been on you to get out there and get a job, and somehow you feel that I think you're a failure, that is not the case. Here's what I really believe about you. Mm -hmm. And let me state several things. Yeah, that is so good. Emerson, I'm leaping out of my chair here, and I hope moms are excited about what they're hearing because it gives them a pathway to improving the relationship with their sons because it will feel like you don't speak the same language and you don't understand each other. And I'm excited to be able to deliver some hope and help to that mom who is so frustrated. Maybe dads too, or you know, moms are turning to their husbands going, help me, and we don't understand what to, what to say or do. Uh, this is a resource um, for you, particularly that mom of the boy. And I'm excited that you've written this. I'm grateful that you have. I can't wait to share it with Gene at home. Emerson, this has been so good. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Hey, I'm John Fuller, and thanks for watching. Get more info about Focus over here and more from our guests over there. And be sure to subscribe to our channel as well.